सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी आई थैंक इंडियन अकेडमी ऑफ साइंसेस ऑल्सो बिट्स फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग मी दिस वेरी वैल्यूबल अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड आई विल टेक फॉरवर्ड वेयर डॉक्टर सी पी सिंह हैज़ स्टॉप्ड बिकॉज ही हैज़ बीन द फंडर लाइक ही हैज़ फंडेड दिस रिसर्च एंड ऑल्सो वी कोलाबरेट बट वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी विल बी फोकसिंग ओनली ऑन गोवा he has been he has given you a broad overview of the entire country and uh, beyond but we are just focusing in goa in one site at one plot so that's what we will be focusing on and uh, here uh, but before that i want to give you some uh, idea about uh, the broad context of our research so you can see that uh, uh, the temperatures especially in the western ghats are increasing uh, so uh, this map shows the differential temperature increase uh, so india has significantly warmed in response to climate change you can see southern india has uh, warmed higher especially the western ghats uh, and also in terms of rainfall you can see the southern western ghats has uh, has experienced a reduction in rainfall significantly whereas the northern western ghats has uh, increased rainfall so we are asking this question so the fundamental question that we are asking and also going forward Uh, we are expecting a lot of so whatever climate change has happened so far that is just the tip of the iceberg what we are expecting till to go further uh, much beyond that this is this work of ours provides an idea about what kind of uh, climate change we are expecting in terms of a temperature rise and rainfall changes in the country so the question the critical question that in my lab we ask this is a broad question very very broad question Uh, how i am very interested in the western ghats basically how is climate change currently effect, uh, affecting western ghats in the last 100 years last 40 years but see we can't talk about 100 years so because we don't have see all we have is the satellite data we don't have the ground observations in the developed countries usa europe etc we have 100 years of like thousands of uh, ground inventory plots are there which are maintained for very long period of time in india we have dearth of such uh, measurements ilc bangalore has one such plot which is being maintained for 40 years but that is a herculean task it has its own, own structural limitations to carry on this kind of work secondly we also want to understand how because whatever climate change has happened whatever even climate change uh, along with the anthropogenic disturbances all these things will continue to happen so how forest ecosystems will Uh, change in going forward in future. This is the um, the critical question that we are interested in ans uh, answer uh, asking. These are the questions that we are asking. So what we have. Uh, so this is the work that I contributed. This is the global work. Uh, so again, this is based on a new satellite project that is uh, that became newly available. This is Beaker and X based on this project. And the general understanding is that the Earth is uh, sort of green. Uh, possibly because of the carbon fertilization effect. Possibly, uh, for example, in countries like China and also in India, India agriculture is the dominant driver of greening, not the forest. But in China, a lot of new areas have also been planted, etc. So the dominant understanding in the field of, among the experts has been that Earth is largely green. But we wanted to go deeper into the surface of it, and recently we have done this study with IIT Bombay and. Uh, So uh, here, what we have done, we have segregated the impact. Which is, so we have uh, especially looked into the forested ecosystems. So why you can see this uh, leaf area index, leaf the first column, the leaf area index is increasing all the way. It is increasing all over India. It is increasing the forested grids. It is increasing the croplands. So the aerial map is correct. There is no nothing wrong in that. But if you look at other matrices, see, uh, uh, so. If we look at, uh, say, for example, net primary productivity, which is a very important indicator of the ecosystem's health, because that is what is actually being generated. That is, that's what actually goes down the uh, tropic uh, level. So you can see that in terms of net primary productivity, the forest ecosystems are the ones where the net primary uh, the net primary productivity is declining, and the decline in the net primary pr productivity is not happening all over the country. It is. The decline is uh, limited in certain areas, which again, uh, like uh, areas like uh, Western Ghats, Peninsula of India, and Northeast India. These all Indias are like so. We all know that Northeastern India as well as Western Ghats. These are some of the biodiversity hotspots in the country. Very very important 
and these also happen to be the climate change hotspots that we have showed the earlier figures. So probably we are not uh, putting any linkage as the, at the moment. It may be due to anthropogenic drivers, especially in the in the northeast of India, lot of deforestation in that. It is certainly the anthropogenic driver here, but in uh, Western Ghats, uh, we are not yet sure what is the thing. So we wanted to investigate further and this opportunity that Dr. C.P. Singh has presented before us in terms of the uh, phenocam and the phenological modeling, we also understand that phenology is one of the most important indicators of the shifting climatic regimes, uh, uh, etc. So, but let me tell you about the state of affair. I think uh, Dr. C.P. Singh has also briefly touched upon it. We have only 37 ground stations in India. He said less than 50. I'm giving you exact number 37 studies. Are uh, like 37 plots are there where uh, the data will be consistently recorded. Out of the 37, only six are long term. When I say long term, the long term is only the maximum is 40, others are 15 to 20 or something. So we we are really data deficient when it comes to the ground observation. So ultimately, for making any large scale uh, uh, like a conclusion or something, we have to rely necessarily on a, a satellite data. And satellite data has a lot of limitations and uh, so that's why we need to discover something in between in between near surface observation which is a uh, phenocam and also we have been fixated so much with the phenocam because it is really cheap it is it can be deployed at a scale i will come to all those things but despite the fact that it is extremely cheap it is uh, very easy to operate affordable efficient very nice tool in India, you can see that this is a paper that my student Karun has published. Uh, he, he has been accepted or published. Uh, it shows that, uh, especially in the uh, Indian, uh, like in the global south, India is part of global south. So, especially in the south Asian region, there's hardly any observations using the phenocam. This is, and uh, whereas in countries like America, the USA, Europe and uh, Japan and uh, even China, we have a lot of uh, studies which are going on using this. So there's an opportunity that India takes a lead, India shows the global south at least how these kind of very cheap, efficient. So uh, let me take you to, uh, so this is the, the phenocam, how it works. So you can see, this is a very important slide. This, this is uh, the reason why we are fixated with the phenocam. So you can see phenological camera what it does, or phenocam, what it does basically, uh, it uh, takes, uh, like it records the meteorological variables, also it takes pictures. It will take pictures in uh, RGB band and IR band. So this is what the, uh, the phenological camera will do. So, but by doing this, it can do all the operations, it can create all the indices that satellites can possibly create. Also, it can create things on the ground, like it can also create things like uh, observations of bird birds, leaf, or etc. with precise, like with very good accuracy. You can see the other, it's very tiny. So it is like an intermediate linking tool. So it can also create indices like NDA, normalized difference vegetation index. It can do things which uh, uh, is done by uh, tools like any covariance towers, etc. It can, it, it can compute. Uh, uh, gross primary productivity essential, which is uh, uh, and uh, with uh, pretty high accuracy. So that's why we have really decided to invest into this uh, technology, and uh, 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 we are part of that IGPP network. And as part of the IGPP network and the funding that has been provided by uh, kindly provided by ISRO, we have uh, established this tower in in the Nethra Valley Forest in uh, in Goa. So you can see that this forest here is at the tri junction it is right on the border of Kerala and Karnataka. It is, to go to this place is really very difficult. The dirt road goes for seven kilometers and the road is like this. In rain, in the rainy season, it's very difficult to even reach there, but still uh, we are uh, doing that and it's uh, situated here. And we have, uh, in we are uh, like measuring a lot of uh, uh, like mythological parameters as well as uh, we are uh, taking the images. So these are the meteorological parameters which are written here. And what we are getting, uh, so the kind of, uh, we are getting a uh, lot of meteorological parameters. Something what uh, unusually we have found in the last one or two years of observation is that we have found very high levels of like the daily temperature rising, especially this year, March. It has been really 
very extreme. You can see the even in that height, I expect the lateral to do some connection there, but uh, the temperature was 38 point something. Right? So the maximum temperature. The humidity was uh, close to 20 percent. It was like I was quite. It was so. It is quite interesting observation that we are getting. We have. We are also monitoring the rainfall, wind speed, and various other parameters here. And what we are doing again, we are also getting the pictures in RGB, and and then using these uh, pictures, as I said, we can create uh, indices such as GCC, such as NEVI, etc., which you normally get from satellite images. So we have created. So we have created this end of season, start of season, as Dr. Siti Singh has been saying. Now. Our uh, ambition is that by using this kind of one year, two year, or three year of observations, we will be able to trace back the satellite data and we may, may be able to bias correct the past historical data sets and get some idea about how the phenology has changed in the last seven years. Also, what we are doing, we are trying to forecast this by establishing relationship between. So, in our plot, we have found that uh, T min, temperature, minimum temperature, is the variable which is having the largest. Uh, a largest effect on the uh, phenological cycle over here. Uh, and then uh, we are also going forward. Uh, so this is, uh, we are trying to understand, how we are trying to understand the current uh, impact of climate change on the forest ecosystems based on just one plot. But we are also uh, like collaborating with ESR and we are trying to develop a model that, that is amenable to the ecologists. I have been all my life uh, like working with the dynamic global vegetation models, but these models were written by climate models. These models are like, like grid-based models. These models were written primarily for the climatological parameters. For them, they wanted to take certain things from forest, but I want more. I, I, I want it to be econo ecologically amenable. I want uh, a, a plot-based model. So we are uh, like working with a very uh, rich network of people for developing this model and, and we are providing the data from our site in Western Ghats and hopefully uh, some, uh, like after some time this model will be ready and we will be able to use it for uh, understanding how to manage our forest better, how to try to adapt to the climate change and this model requires a lot of data, uh, like a lot of data needs are there, plot label demographic, straight based parameters, mythological parameters, tree architecture, you name it, it's uh, n number of parameters that are required. So what we have done to meet these requirements, we have gone beyond the mandate of the IGBP project. The mandate was to just install a phenocam tower, but we've gone beyond that mandate. So you can see that this is our phenological uh, camera where we are looking at. So if you see what is happening near to the camera, you are just looking at two, three trees. As you go farther, you have 10 to 50 trees. As you go very further, you have 10,000 of trees. That's there. So the field view of camera is increasing. And what we did, we got a very convenient place here to lay a plot. So we have made a plot here. And that plot, uh, what we have done actually, we have uh, uh, done, uh, so we have uh, 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 laid a plot here. And you can see the plot is here. Uh, the plot uh, in, in terms of geographical location is coming somewhere here on the top of the hill. And we have been able to link, and for linking satellite data, what we have done for laying the plot, we have done total system survey, we have done uh, DGPS survey. DGPS survey is very highly accurate. It gives you accuracy of one to three centimeters. And by doing this, we have been able to locate each and every point, each and every tree, literally we know, and then we are able to connect it with the satellite data. So that's what we have done. Uh, and we have uh, uh, followed all the international protocols in setting up this plot and uh, uh, so we have a very good idea about this. Uh, and based on this, what we have done, all the trees, which are more than one centimeter, have been tagged in, in this plot. And we can measure the VH, which is the girth of the tree. We have measured the height. We have measured a lot of parameters in the tree. And we have these markings are there. So based on these, we have created uh, the carbon stock values. What we find, see if I don't have time, we won't go into details of that. What we have found that uh, we have uh, approximately uh, 1,200 tons of carbon dioxide that is there uh, stored in this just one hectare. This is like, uh, compared to that, if you see, this is uh, the value that we are getting in the is pretty high compared to uh, other values that are published in, in, uh, in uh, literature. So our forests are pretty rich forests. We have 
lot of carbon uh, uh, fixation that have happened there. At the same time, <coughs> uh, we have also looked at the diversity aspect. So if you look at the tree diversity aspect, we have found 5,375 individuals in our plot. Out of them, uh, it is like a semi evergreen forest. So we have 61% of the species that are evergreen. And then, but uh, what I want to highlight here is that we have done everything. So this, uh, uh, so the species richness, we found 84 different species in our plot. This is again quite high compared to what is reported in the literature elsewhere. But you can see that uh, if I was taking the Einstein list, two were in the species, but 47 were not even evaluated. So what we are trying to argue that the IUCN registers, maybe of a species, maybe we should create a register of ecosystems because the species are innumerable. Probably it is not possible. And even the most dominant species, that is the Olia, even that one is not even evaluated. So I think uh, the, the red list of species is having serious deficiencies and we need, and we need to propose See, uh, about a red, red listing of the ecosystems, uh, rather, and then uh, <coughs> we have also gone ahead and we have uh, measured a lot of trade based parameters. So, as uh, so, this is like all instruments again for C. So, we have the C instrument, and we, are, uh, we have been able to create some of the uh, photosynthesis rates, sort of, and which these kind of things will go into the model development and uh, like, especially so for key species. We have done this kind of analysis where we have varied the CO2 concentration as within the in the atmosphere and have seen the effect of that uh, on the tree. Our experiments are going on. We'll do more experiment in order to uh, support. And then uh, we have also collected leaf area index information simultaneous to this other information. And uh, uh, I will not take much time. Uh, we have uh, also taken, uh, so one of the requirements of the model development you may have seen is the tree architecture. We have taken the, we have taken the terrestrial LIDAR uh, uh, to this uh, site and um, how can I play this? <coughs> ah, it's playing, yeah, it's playing. So you can, it gives you an idea about the forest. And as Sir has suggested, we have selected certain species, individuals. Uh, from LIDAR, it is quite difficult to get this. This is enormous uh, amount of point cloud. But we have selected only a few individuals. We are working on them, trying to create their uh, tree. For example, we have exactly complete information about all the individuals, the tag number. Just to illustrate, and uh, yeah, this is also part of our experiment. We are thankful to the team from IT Rurki who has come and supported us in this kind of uh, endeavor. Uh, so uh, I think I, my, my time is running out. So I will uh, uh, now conclude this. Some of the concluding remarks that I'd like to make is that in India, we have a uh, lack of long-term observations. It is important not only for a sector. We have uh, n number, of, even in Goa, we have enormous, like a lot of diversity, a lot of ecosystems are there, we monitor them. So if we monitor them, then we know what to do with them. So uh, this monitoring is uh, lacking, and this Pino cam camera is a very good uh, idea. It may be very cost effective, we are working on that, maybe a startup will be uh, like built, which will build these Pino camps and will be given. So we, are, we have all those ideas, uh, that's why in this context, satellite data might be a very useful tool. How the satellite data has uncertainties, so we need to get this cost effective tool. And then uh, we are also, uh, so conventionally, the dynamic vegetation models were developed as a necessary to global climate models. With created structure, tree diversity represented as PFTs. So we present an alternative approach of dynamic vegetation modeling here that is eco evolutionary plot based model that represents biodiversity and provides insights into solutions. How does tree, what a tree does when a drought is there? How, how it copes? That is, because like those kind of learnings we need to get. I'm hoping that our model will be able to do that, but probably it's a tall order, but I think time will tell us. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm, I would like to thank all my collaborators, all of them. It's a picture taken in the forest with all their equipments. 
and uh, the funding agencies, everybody is interested in it. I especially mention uh, like Mr. Karun and Nasla. Here, uh, they, these are the backbone of our work. They, have, they are here also. Uh, so they have done all the work actually, and I'm just taking all the credit here. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be very quick. Dr. Chaturvedi, thank you so much. I've known you for quite some time. You are a brilliant geographer. But what is a little alarming to me as a student of biology is your proposition that we should now look at ecosystems for conservation assessment. I will defeat the idea that every individual species is a unique genomic microcosm and needs evaluation at that level. So I am not very comfortable with the idea that we should now, red listing is a conservation <laughs> assessment tool that needs to be species specific. That's my submission. Thank you. Sir, so, it is very if I answer. So, registering of species remains. At the same time, we also do registering of species. Probably that's fine. Right. I'm that's not saying right. that that is to be It should not be a substitute. Yes, it is already there. It can be scrapped. Yeah, I have some two, three observations. Number one, some 50 years ago, uh, I'm, I'm, this is a, it is not a perception, it is a fact. 50 years ago, when I joined my first service in Shillong, the people had not seen the fan in Shillong. Today, not only the fan, there are air conditioners in all the houses today. That is the situation. Climate has changed, that I agree. Your study mainly pertains to the climate change vis-a-vis -vis the vegetation, impact on the vegetation that you have done. Uh, particularly in the Western Ghat and uh, the other gentlemen studies in the Himalayan region. Yes, I appreciate. See, it is, we, will, we all accept that it is no more a perception, but it is a fact. Yes. Climate change is impacting. The question now is not that one. How, the, the, if there is a shift now. Desert areas are getting more rains and uh, evergreen areas are not getting rain. Right in Karnataka, I am talking. Yes. Like places like Gulbarga, Bijapur, floods they are getting. Whereas in Bangalore or in uh, Mysore, we, do, we are not getting rain. What may be the reason? It is not due to the vegetation. It may not be something else. I think that you should think. The other thing is you have a big group of students working. How many of them are taxonomy? Is there any plan, person who can identify yes, correctly the, the taxonomy? Yes. Yeah, if there are taxonomies, it's fine. Otherwise, you will have wonderful data but under a wrong name. That should not happen. And the third one you said, critically endangered uh, ecosystems or patches of ecosystems should also be listed. Botanical Survey is doing that, critically endangered habitats, like Nepenthes habitat, like uh, the Freeria habitat. There are so many habitats there. It, uh, it is better to collaborate with one of the Botanical Survey scientists. That would be a you know, lot of work Botanical Survey has done already in all these directions. I, I want to inform you that the SI will be arriving to talk. And, uh, like we are with okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. You talked about car, uh, carbon sequestration. What about the other direction? I missed the first half of your talk, so you might have talked about this. But with climate change, you're also having a bunch of plants that are dying at a different rate. Can you measure it directly, you know, from maybe methane production or something else? Can you actually, because when you, when you talk from a climate change point of view, both of them are uh, are important. People only talk about the carbon sequestration in, in forests, but you have to worry about that as climate climate changes. Your trees don't. So how do you do? You actually try to measure it, and can you? You can do it from the satellites too. So we, that, <coughs> we will be going to the plot again next year also. Every year we go, and since we know exactly the location of each tree, we have tagged, so we know who has died. So we have complete. So we, that's why we say census, recruitment, and mortality. Every individual will be recorded.